and I'm sure tonight another message is coming. Amen. Tonight is a special night for you. Amen. I'm sure God will meet you at the deepest point of your need. Amen. And I'm sure God is going to use his minister in a supernatural way. Amen. I want you to stand up right now with me. And as you lift up your right hand to God, let us pray for the man of God that God will descend upon him mightily. The anointing will cause him to begin to function in the very way God wants him to pray tonight. Pray for him right now. Let's pray for him right now. Yes, let's pray, 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 pray. Whatever you want God to use you to do, just pray. Pray. Pray that God will use you in a supernatural way. In a supernatural way. Yes. Pray. Yes, Lord, we bless your holy name. In a supernatural way, you will use your servant. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you praise. Father, we give you the praise and the glory. We thank you. That you are about to call the mouth of your son. He only has the mouth of clay. But you, God Almighty, will pass through clay and do signs and wonders that will amaze your enemies and enemies. Oh God, come and build, come and construct. Come and develop, come and heal, come and bless your people. We give you praise. We give you the glory. And we thank you, oh God, that every soul that came tonight, they will leave this place knowing that they came to you. Oh God, bless them. Bless them in a very special way. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' mighty name. Somebody say, Amen. amen. Now open your eyes. Give Jesus a good clap offer right now. Oh, give the Lord Jesus a welcome. Because he has to take over before the man will speak. Jesus Christ. That's that Jesus. Somebody say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. Say, Jesus. All right, we need three calls, yeah. Help to welcome the servants of God from first. Reverend Alaric, God bless you. Keep on clapping. Keep on. I need. Keep on clapping. Hello. Keep on clapping. The people in the world, when they go and see a concert, they are not like warm like you. But they are hot. People who go see football, they are hot. Show me how hot you are for the Lord. What did the Lord did for you? Warm up, warm up. Come on, applause. Give glory to God. Wake up, wake up, wake up, wake up. Glory to God. Amen. You can sit down. Do not be lukewarm. Be warm. Or be cold. If you don't want to be vomited by the mouth of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. So, again tonight I know I have too many things to say. And too many things to do. And not enough time. If you are too slow, you're not going to be able to catch the ball. Are you ready? Yes. Are you ready? Yes. Today is the day of your healing. Amen. Who believes? Say amen. amen. Today is the day of your deliverance. Amen. Say amen. amen. Say today is the day of my healing. Say today is the day of my deliverance. Let it be according to your faith. Amen. 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 If you believe, you will see the glory of God. Amen. 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 This is not a man of God who says the word of God who says. And God is not a man to lie. Amen. Amen. You have to believe. You have to have faith. Faith. Okay, I'm not going to preach because I have many things to, to do. I'm going to give uh, the second part of my testimony and we're also going to pray. Amen? Amen? We prayed already this afternoon for deliverance. We're going to pray also for healing. Is there anybody sick here? Raise your hand. So there is two people. Yes, we will pray. 
and you will be healed in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen? And we're going to pray for deliverance. Hallelujah. Amen. So, who was not here yesterday? Raise your hand. Okay, so you missed uh, the, first part, the first part of my testimony. There is the booklet of my testimony in English, and in German, and in French. You can buy. So I think that I stopped at the moment I was dead. Yes, it's a strange, uh, no, so normally it's the end. Huh? It's not the first part, it's the last part. But with Jesus, everything is possible, amen? There is a second part, amen? So, I, fall, I fell asleep and I thought it was the end of it. And I thought it was really, I will never wake up again, neither in this body, never in spirit. I thought death was the end of any uh, memories, of any suffering. And I first fall asleep, it was at midnight. I kept my word. Because I gave a promise to the demons, if you remember right. yesterday. But then to my surprise, I had two surprises. First surprise, I woke up. And second surprise, I was not in my body. I was outside my body. Because you are not only a piece of meat, uh, you are not only flesh, you are not only a body. You are an eternal soul or an eternal spirit in a body. And your body will perish, but your spirit will never perish, will live forever. Either in heaven, either in hell or in the lake of fire or whatever name you give it. Amen? Amen. So when you die, what happened? The Bible says your body go back to the earth where it came from and your spirit go back to God who created it. Isn't it written? In Ecclesiastes. So the Bible is the truth, so that's what I lived. I was outside my body. They find my body 17 hours later, which means 5 p.m. the next day. And they put me in a car to bring me at the hospital to see if they can uh, do something about me. And on the way, in the car, I woke up and I was, around, I was about, uh, about, I don't know, five meters, six meters. Do you understand meters here? Yes, that's right. Okay. From my body. So the car was moving very fast because the guy was very, you know, stressed out. So I was very surprised to be alive and to be not in my body. I look at the car. I was in a spiritual realm. I could see through things. You know, in the spiritual realm, <clears throat> you can see through things. Yes. You know, Jesus Christ, when he Raised again, he came with a new body. It's the body we will have, yes? It's not a, a spirit, it's not a body, it's a new body. You know that? And with this body, Jesus ate fish, yes? Even honey. But with this body, he also went through the wall. You know that? It's written in the Bible. 
But me, it was just my simple spirit because I was not raised again. Nobody is raised again. Only one, Jesus Christ. Amen? Amen. Until one day, at the last trumpet, everybody who died, small or big, rich or poor, who are in, I don't know in English, the, the place where the dead are. What's the name in English? Hades. Huh? Hades. Hades. Okay. The place where we wait for judgment. Yes? One day there will be the last trumpet and everybody will come back to life, yes? And then there will be the judgment. And I was shocked, but I was like, I thought, hey, it was interesting, this new situation. I look at the outside, it was in winter, so it was 5 p.m., but it was dark. I saw the forest, and I looked behind, and I saw my body. Please uh, close the phones, or put them on, on silence, because it's always, uh, it's always ringing at the, at the wrong moment. I, I watched my body, I look at my body, and my body was like a dead body, like a plastic, you know, a plastic body, like a, like a doll. There was a... So there was somebody behind, uh, just beside me, who was moving my body like this and trying to wake me up. And I thought, oh, that person is going too harsh on my body. I was afraid that she break that body. You know, for me, I was that body. I, indeed, I identified myself to that body. For me, that body was me. But in fact, me now, I was not in that body anymore. But I live for so long in a body, I identify myself only to that body. Yes? And I saw what they were thinking. And I was connected to my body like with an umbilical cord, spiritual one. So I was still connected to my body. Then I look, I wanted to see where I was going because there was a force that was attracting me outside my body. Because whether or not, whether you want it or not, when you die, you will go out of your body, you cannot stay there. You cannot stay with your body. You cannot, it's impossible. And I look and I saw demons that were waiting for me. It was like a welcome committee. They were waiting for me. There were many. There were more than I thought because I, I thought I, I was not in relationship with so many demons. And they didn't look the way I used to see them because then I saw their true nature. They were not hiding anymore. They were not disguised in angel of light anymore. And I saw their real intention and their real cruelty and their real face. And it was horrible. I cannot even start to explain. It's impossible to explain. <clears throat> even if you imagine the worst horror movie of Hollywood you saw, the, the worst demon you saw on a video game, this is uh, not even the start of it. I cannot explain. It is impossible to explain with human world because it's in the spiritual realm and it's much more. The cruelty is much more than human cruelty. cruelty. Yes? The things are... Everything is more. I don't know how to explain, it's impossible to explain. And they were waiting for me. And they were not waiting for me with good intention. They were waiting for me to torture me. And when you are in the spiritual realm, it's not the same as when you are, we are here. Because down here, we are in a temporal 
uh, situation, yes? We know there is everything as a beginning, everything as an end. We have the notion of the past, of the present, of the future. We have a notion that everything can be fixed. If I have a problem, maybe I can change, I can improve. But when you are in the spiritual realm, nothing is changeable. Nothing can be changed. Sometimes I hear Christian saying, why God doesn't do that? If I was God, I wouldn't change. But in, in the spiritual realm, what is, is, as I said yesterday. What the Word of God says will happen. Don't think, oh, but God will never say that. God will never do that. <clears throat> he will do it. So, I was there, it was too late. And although before I hated life and I was happy to die, for the first time of my life, I wanted to live again. I wanted to go back in my body because I, I didn't want to stay in that kind of eternity. <clears throat> eternity is long. It never ends. Amen? That's why I insist so much, like yesterday, to say to you, even if you know a lot of things about the Bible and about God, if you are sure to be saved, because at any time you can die, you are not the master of your breathing. Don't think, I'm young, I still have 40 years, you don't even know if you have 4 seconds. And if you knew what was awaiting you, if you were not ready, you will not wait a second more. But you will fall on your knee and ask forgiveness and repent. Because when it's too late, it's too late. And you cannot change. As long as you are here, you can change your destiny. But you don't know how long you'll be here. Don't play with your destiny. Eternity has no end. Don't think, yeah, but no problem, one day or another, God is going to take me out of hell because He is a good God and He will not allow me to burn in hell for eternity. This is a lie from the devil. What God has said, he, it will happen. That's right. Even if we don't understand. Why? Even if it seems unfair, unjust to us, but it is just, we will understand one day the wisdom of God. Amen? Amen. So don't end up in hell because of your uh, rebellion or because you don't want to, or your unbelief. So when I saw them, I wanted to go back in my body. And I knew because I was still connected, I, I could go back. You understand? In Ecclesiastes also, it is said, I don't know in English, but, you know, remember your creation before the... Uh, not the silver cord is cut. Do you know that? Is that it? Is loose? Is that in English? You know that verse? You better know it. Because if this cord is co is cut off, it's impossible to come back. That's why I was able to come back. How many people have laughed about God? Have said all their life, I have time, and they died. And after a while, and they mocked God. And when, I think it's Ecclesiastes 12. And then, when they die, at 
in a split second they understood they were wrong and they say I want to change and it's too late so now you who are living and who are hearing me you still have a chance but you live only once then come the judgment be ready Because there are other people uh, that you were not there yesterday. <coughs> please close your eyes. Everybody. I want to say again like yesterday, please close your eyes. I just want, it's not, I'm no, I, I, it's not I'm wasting time. I'm just giving you the opportunity if tonight you are not sure to be saved. That means if you died tonight, if you're not sure, that your name is written in a book of life. You are not sure 100%. Please raise your hand and I will pray with you. So if you're not sure to be saved, raise your hand now. Only me can see you. Yes. Okay, so come in front. Come in front. The other could keep your eyes closed. Come in front. You has. Lift up, come. This is very important. I know this is a de deliverance weekend. But salvation is the most important thing. Amen? Can you open your eyes? Do you know how to be saved? You don't know how to be saved? Be saved is easy, but it's difficult also. It's simple, but it's complicated. If you are obedient, it's simple. If you are rebellious, it becomes complicated. This is the kingdom of God. Jesus said, "If you don't, can, you're not able to become like a small child. You will, you will not be able to enter the kingdom of God. It will be too complicated for you." You have to enter the narrow door. That means you have to humble yourself. No proud will be able to enter heaven because the door is too small. And they don't want to get on their knees to enter. So, it's only the Holy Spirit that can convince you. It's not me, it's, G it's the Holy Spirit who can convince you who is Jesus Christ, what he did on the cross. Only the Holy Spirit can convince you of sins, of judgment and of righteousness. Yes? Do you believe you are a sinner? You think you, you're not a sinner? You're not a sinner? You're a good person? Yes. Are you a sinner? I believe I'm a sinner. Are you a sinner? Are you a good person? Are you a sinner? Yes. This is the first step to recognize that you are a sinner. Because Jesus came to save the sinners, not the righteous who don't need, you know. But this is something that God, that the Holy Spirit will be able to show you. Yes. And now the price of the sin is death. And death for eternity. So Jesus Christ who was not a sinner, who was God, and his blood was pure, yes? He died on the cross instead of you to pay the price. It's like you have a debt of one million dollar and I pay for you the debt. You just have to accept this fact. So you have to, to be saved, you have to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior and Lord to repent from your sin, ask forgiveness to God. This must be done in your heart. Amen? You have to follow the Holy Spirit. What the Holy Spirit is showing you now, don't follow my voice, follow the voice of the Holy Spirit. Amen? Put your hand like this, please. So you can repeat this prayer after me, the three, if you agree, or neither two, if you don't agree, you don't. 
Huh? You don't have to, okay? Repeat only the sentence you agree with. Father God, I come to you in the name of Jesus Christ. Thank you, Jesus, because you died on the cross. You shed my, your blood instead of my blood. You paid all my debt. You have been cursed instead of me. Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Savior. Jesus Christ, I confess you as my Lord. Forgive me my sins. I want to turn away from my sins and obey your word and obey you in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. You can go back. You can go and sit back. Only God knows the heart, how deep and how truly you did this prayer. Amen. So by the grace of God, when I say I want to go back in my body, I was able to go back. So I immediately was again unconscious, yes, because my body, my brain was not working. So for me, this story ended, ended there, amen? The next thing. My eyes open, and everything was white. Everything was shiny. It was warm. I was in peace. And I thought, how is it possible? I am confused. Did I finally reach heaven? How is it possible? I don't understand. I thought I was dead. I thought I just got back in my body. How come I, I be in heaven? And I saw somebody come in a human bodily form, completely white, shiny. And I said, who are you and am I in heaven? And he said, no, you are at the psychiatrist hospital. I am a nurse. <laughs> so I was disappointed. <laughs> I was disappointed. Because I was blur, I couldn't see well, uh, well but it was winter. But that day was a, it was two days later, it was a sunny day. And they gave me some medication. I couldn't see clearly. So I was happy to be back in my body. Amen? Amen? Maybe if one day you go to sleep and the next day you wake up and they tell you you are at the psychiatrist hospital, you say, oh, I want to get out of here. This is terrible. But for me, it's so great. I'd rather spend all my life in psychiatrist hospital than one second in uh, hell. So I thought, Thank you, life, because life gave me a second chance. I didn't say thank you, God, because I didn't know God. I said, life gave me a second chance. I don't know why. I do not deserve it. But I'm not going to blow it this time. I've got to think to make things right. And next time I die, I will not go in hell, but I will go to heaven. And I want, next time I die, it will not be demons that uh, welcome me, but angels. So I'm going to do the best I can to make it happen. But I have no idea how to make it happen. I didn't know Jesus. I didn't know the cross. I didn't know the blood of Jesus. Nobody ever told me about that. 
I never heard the gospel. The only thing I knew about Christians and Jesus was in the Catholic Church with a dead Jesus and with dead people, dead Christians, with no good news. So I thought, I've got to make it right. How can I? I have to wash my soul. I have to cleanse myself. I have to redeem myself. But how? So I said, first of all, I've got to stop doing evil. So first decision, I said, I'm going to stop killing people. It's a good decision, no? Yeah, that's right. And not only I'm going to try to stop doing evil, I'm going to try to do good. Like this, I'm going to, to do so much good. I will do more good than I did evil. So I will be righteous. This is a human thinking. This is also a thinking from the devil that makes people think they can go to heaven by their own deeds. The Catholics teach that. Islam teach that. Hinduism, they don't talk about heaven, but Nirvana is the same with the deeds. Buddhism, your good deeds will lead you to heaven. But the, uh, hell is full of good deeds. And good deeds will not bring you to heaven only by faith. Amen. And by the righteousness of God. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Ephesians chapter 2 verse 8 says that it is by faith that you are saved. And not by your deeds. Amen. Amen. But I didn't know that. Nobody teach me. I never heard anything like that. So, my father, when I was young, he was doing yoga. He was a karateka. If somebody is doing karate. And he was in orientalism. And he was doing yoga. And I thought it is the only way I know how I can purify myself. So I started to do yoga and meditation to try to purify my soul. And I did it very thoroughly. I controlled my breathing, I controlled my thoughts, but there were still demons. Sometimes that were manifesting. You know, some demons, I don't know in English, they are knocking. In French there is a word for that, I don't know. Some demons, they like to knock, to make... I don't know the name in English. I was feeling a little better, but I felt after many months that I was not getting nowhere with that. I had less anguish, but I was not in peace. And all those efforts, I couldn't wash my soul. So I thought, what can I do? What can wash my soul? Who can redeem me? And there, at that time, it was winter again and I had no money and I had no work and I didn't know how to work because I never worked in my life I was there in the cold and I thought I will never survive in the street I was taking food on the floor to eat but it was not enough I was cold and I thought Maybe it's my destiny. Maybe it's not possible to change. And my destiny is to burn in hell. And I cannot change it. So I'd rather go now because anyway, I'm going to suffer here too. So I gave up. 
because I tried everything I knew to redeem myself, to wash myself <clears throat> and to change my destiny. So I was at the end of my rope and it's at that moment that God came. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. A friend of mine, we were taking drugs together. He said, come, there is something fantastic. I said, what? It's a place. There is great thing happening. They are Christians. I say, I hate Christians. What is fantastic about Christians? There is nothing good about Christians. Because the devil has put hate in my heart for three things. For Christians, for the Word of God, and for, the, and for Jesus Christ. Because he didn't want me to approach Christians. He didn't want me to read the Bible. He didn't want me to know about Jesus. So I said, no, I will not come. I will never put my feet in a church. I wanted to vomit. But after he argued, argued weeks after week, he gave me new arguments until the day he said it's not in the church. He said many things. And I got angry and I said, okay, I will come one time. But then you will never talk about this about anymore. So I went there. And there was a guy preaching, speaking about the Bible, but I didn't understand a word because he was using words I didn't understand even in French, the words of the Bible. Like justification, like crucifixion. I didn't know, I never heard those words. They were too long for me, for too long words, those words were too long for me. So I was not listening, I was just watch, looking at my watch and saying to my friend, okay, how long is going to last? Because when it's done, I'm out, you know? And then I look at the guy and I saw his aura, I saw his soul, I saw his spirit. That's what I said this afternoon in the, in the interview. And his aura was so white and was so pure and was so powerful. I thought there is no spirit, higher spirit than that. There is no whiter than that. There is no powerful or pure than that. And I said, I don't know what this guy has, but I want it. Amen? Amen. To me, it was a power. My, by, my bad side came back. Like Simeon, you know? Is it Simeon in English? The witch doctor in the book of Acts. Is it Simeon? That you wanted the power of the Holy Spirit for money. Is it what? Simeon? Simon? Ah, Simon, sorry. Simon. You know? I thought I want this power because this is the ultimate power. I thought I had already a lot of spiritual power, but I said this is more powerful than whatever what I saw before. And I want this power, with this power I will be like the king. Amen? Amen. So at the end, instead of going out, I went to see this guy and I said, you power, tell me what it is and tell me how I get it. Give it to me. What do I have to do to get that power? But then he talked about Jesus. I said, no, don't talk about this Jesus. I was sure there was something else behind. 
So I came back the next week. Because I said I'm not going to let this guy go. Before he transmit to me this power. So I went back and there was another meeting and he was talking again. And I was not listening again. But at one point he said, those who want the power of God come from in front. So I ran in front. I was the only one. I was the least expected to come in front. But it was for a wrong reason. So I thought, okay, he said, I'm going to pray for you. And I said, okay, pray for me and give me the power that I'm out of here. <laughs> and I'm going to use that power to see what I can do. So then the Holy Spirit has to come, had to come there. And the Holy Spirit showed me Jesus. I didn't know it was the Holy Spirit. I knew it was the Spirit. He showed me Jesus. He said, you have to go through Jesus and through the cross to get the power. And I said to the Holy Spirit, no. I don't want you, Jesus. I want the power behind. Take this Jesus away from me and give me the power. So the Holy Spirit showed me a vision. And he told me, if now you refuse Jesus and you get out of this place, you will not have a second chance. And he showed me that I was going to die six months later. I'm not telling that the Holy Spirit said, accept Jesus or I will kill you. I said that God knew that if he knew my destiny, like I said yesterday, my Adamic destiny, my calendar, you remember? And he showed me a vision how I would die, where and when. And you know, even if you don't know the Holy Spirit, when the Holy Spirit speaks, you know that it's the truth. And you better listen to it. So because I had this, what we call the near-death experience, NDE, I died. I knew I was not ready. And I thought... I better make a pact with my enemy to save my neck, to save my soul, because I don't want to go in hell. Amen? So I capitulated. I said to God, okay, I accept Jesus Christ. Amen? I gave the decision that God asked me to take. Amen. And then at the end of the meeting, the guy say, he said, come here in, in a corner. <coughs> he said, sit down. We were on the floor, they, were, they didn't have money, there was no chairs. So I was sitting on the floor, and he was about that distance, you know. And he looked at me, he just sit down. And then he said, in the name of Jesus Christ, get out! So I thought, okay, he kicked me out. He's telling me, he's telling me to get out. I say, yeah, they, you know, those Christians, they don't have any education. You come in the meeting, they tell you, oh, welcome, I love you. And when, when you accepted the Jesus, they kick you out. But I guess you understand what he was doing, no? He was not talking to me. He was talking, talking to the demons. Amen? He was a young guy. Maybe he was in his, in his 20s. Maybe he don't have a lot of experience with deliverance. I'm sure the Holy Spirit showed him. But he was afraid, you know, because he was afraid. He didn't come near me, didn't touch me. He was ready to, to go away if the demons came out, you know. But he obeyed. And although he had no power, the demons had 
to submit themselves and to flee and to go away. Amen? Because Jesus gave him the authority to cast out demons in the obey the word of God. And what the word of God say happened has happened. And after a while, the demons, they came out of me, one after the other. And I was so surprised to have so many inside of me. I was angry with him because I felt empty. I can tell it's like he depossessed me from my personality because many demons, I thought it was me. My character, I thought there was something, it was me, but in fact it was the demons in me. So I feel like empty. And I was angry. I said, why? Without my permission, he did that. I'm glad he did, didn't ask me, otherwise I would have said no. But then, he said, come, we're going to pray for you, you're going to receive another spirit. I said, yeah, okay, whatever. I'm used to spirit. But I don't know, that he was talking about the Holy Spirit. Amen? Amen? So at that moment, because I didn't have no more demons, all the Christians, they came and touched me to receive the Holy Spirit because they were not afraid of me anymore. I was just a plain man. I was not a, a possessed man. Amen? And they prayed for me. And I received the Holy Spirit. Hallelujah! The Holy Spirit, which is the promise of God, the promise that has been sealed and that I have eternal life. And from now on, I belong to God. And that God lives in me. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. I'm going to stop my testimony there, but I've got a lot of things to say about what happened next. It was not a walk in the park. 36 years of walking with Jesus, with highs and lows, up and downs, with me, sometimes obeying, sometimes disobeying, disappointed by Christians, me, disappointed people, but I never been disappointed by Jesus Christ. Yeah. Amen? Amen? I never been disappointed by the Word of God. Hallelujah. And although I am not perfect and far from that, I walk. Amen? And I do what God tells me to do. Not in a perfect way. But I do what God tells me to do. Because soon, when I will die, and I will be in front of the judgment seat, in front of Jesus Christ, I want to hear him tell me, come, you faithful worker, enter in the peace of your master. You know what, it's not the right word in English, but you know what I mean. The Holy Spirit translates for you. Amen. And now I know, I know, next time I die, the demons, they will not greet me, but angels. Yeah. Hallelujah. Not because of what I did, but because of what Jesus did. And not because I'm a good man. And I have faith, because even faith is a gift of God, the Word of God says. So I have nothing to deserve. The friend who bring me to the meeting, he never came to Jesus. And he had a terrible life. And he died at 42 years old of a heart attack. He had one million Swiss franc at the bank. But the government 
take the money and give him every day some money for his cigarette, for his coffee. And they put him in a small dirty hotel and he lived like a bum. But he was a millionaire. Because he, he didn't accept Jesus Christ. Amen? And he died. I hope that he accepted Jesus Christ before he died. But God used him to save me. Amen? Amen. Glory to God. Amen. Give a big clap to the Lord. Say hallelujah. God is doing great things. And I know every one of you has a testimony of the great thing that God has done to you. And you have to share your testimony. Hallelujah. So, we're going to pray for the sick first, and then we're going to pray for deliverance. Amen. So, those who are sick, <coughs> please come in. Come in front. <coughs> if you are sick in your body, come in front. Jesus said, you will lay your hands on the sick and they will be healed. It is as simple as that. Those who are sick in their bodies come in front. Leave a place that can move. Do you have faith yes. that Jesus can, can heal you? Yes. yes. Let it be done according to your faith. I want you to put your hand where you are feeling hurt. If you hurt everywhere, just touch your head. Because it is your faith that heals. Amen. Can I have some oil, please? So now confess if you have sins to confess, if you have sins to confess, do it now. If you have something against somebody, forgive. Many people are sick because they do not forgive. If you want to help yourself, forgive those who have done wrong to you, even if they don't deserve it. Because if they, you don't forgive them, you don't do them no wrong, you do wrong to yourself. You punish yourself. Don't worry, God will take care of that person.